people in mean, the audience who only speak English, right? So the yeah. session will be in English. I will do my best. As I said before, um, this is about front end, um, new stuff in HTML and CSS. Yeah. Stuff you may have heard about, some stuff you don't use, and I hope there's some stuff you um, don't know about. But in the case that you already know everything about menu, menu item, or um, the support feature, or snap points, and scripts, and flexbox, then this session is probably not for you. Anyway, for those of you who don't know me, I'm uh, Nicola Schwarz, I'm a freelancer uh, working in Dortmund. And um, as I said before, this session um, features HTML and CSS, new stuff in HTML 5.1. Um, some stuff you may or may not use, flexbox, grids, and some stuff uh, from the future. Um, <clears throat> this is a brief history of um, HTML, and it started um, in '92, and we had some progress in the early years, um, and then there was a big gap somewhere between 1999 and um, 2014, where there was, of course, some stuff going on with um, X HTML and the different approaches to go with HTML, but um, there was no um, new specification in the sense that um, HTML5 provided. Nowadays, um, they're working a little bit differently, so HTML5.1 was um, released last November, and 5.2 can be expected by the end of this year, or maybe in the um, next year. And the next iterations uh, should come faster than before. So what's new in um, 5.1? Um, can you see the marks here that's supposed to be yellow? Oh, it doesn't really work on the people. A little bit. A little bit. Okay, uh, new is the main element. Uh, it was discussed before, but it wasn't um, in the specification. Now it's in there, so you can use the main element. And um, it's meant like the main element is for the main content of the page, which means you can only use one main element per page. And um, in the old times, you maybe had a div container with a role um, with a role as main. You don't need that anymore. If you say if you use the element main, you can use just main, or you don't need the role main. And um, in case you need to. Um, do this for all the Internet Explorers, you can use a little script to um, create an element for main if you need it. Um, <clears throat> there are new HTML elements, details, and um, summary. Detail is a container, and the first part of the container is a summary. And what it does is um, something like this. You can now click on the summary, and um, it toggles the rest of the container. Of course, this can be done with um, JavaScript or um, CSS, for example, with, um, with the target pseudo selector. But now you can do this um, in HTML without anything, anything else. Um, what's good about it, as I said, you don't uh, need JavaScript or CSS. And you can use the uh, selector details um, open for some styling. But the bad thing is here, you can't do anything um, about the arrow. The arrow is just there and it um, points either to the right or down. Um, in WebKit browsers, you can do something with, a, um, with an arrow, for example, um, um, display none, say display none, none, but this only works in uh, WebKit browsers. And it's supported quite well in the good browsers and in some other browsers. It's not supported yet. But it doesn't really matter. It depends what you want to achieve in the um, in the Internet Explorer or Edge. If they don't know the um, element, they will just um, straight um, give you the text. So you can't toggle anything. It just gives you the summary and then the, the rest of the container without any toggle options. So the content will be visible. Um, new is um, menu and menu item. If you need it, you can. I have here a paragraph with, uh, which defines a context menu. Uh, this works some, somewhat like a um, label in forms. And then you can find a menu, and the menu has different menu items. This might be useful for, for example, single page applications. And what it does is the following. Um, 
we are here in Firefox, and if I use the, um, if I right click on a page, I get the usual um, context menu. But if I right click here, I get other options which are provided by HTML. And now I can click on the checkbox if I want to, or I can use a command which gives me a little bit JavaScript. Um, of course, this is new, and this only works in Firefox so far. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, um, HTML 5.1 gives us responsive images. The first part is um, source set, and source set lets you define, um, it's meant to define the same picture in higher resolution. So you can say if you have an, um, an image uh, which has a usual um, resolution and you want to have it for retina displays or uh, displays with a higher density, pixel density, you can define different paths for um, pictures with higher resolution. And then you just add the uh, one times, two times, three times. Instead of saying one times, two times, three times, you can also define the width of the picture in pixels, which is here, um, for example, 600 uh, W, which is 600 pixels. Now, which um, picture will be chosen? Chosen that depends on um, some factors like pixel density on the user screen, the zoom level, and possibly other factors like uh, the user's network conditions. Then there are sizes you can define, and in this case, um, you, you read it like this. Um, the width of the image um, is 50% of the viewport if the viewport is greater than 40 EM. And if the viewport is um, to a maximum of 40 EM, then the picture shall take 100% um, of the viewport. Um, it's supported quite well, and if you look at here, you always have a fallback option with the usual image source. So um, even if all the browsers don't understand sizes of source sets, then they will um, still show the picture. This gets more complicated as there's also the uh, picture element, which you may uh, know as Drupal um, 8 um, uses this already if you want to. And here you add a source. It, it, this is meant to be uh, used for art direction if you want to um, show different images for different um, width in um, responsive displays. So, um, the browser will then choose the most appropriate image and the most appropriate image uh, picture is supported quite well. Um, the right picture now depends on art direction, pixel density, viewport, zoom level, and other factors like bandwidth. And this is quite complicated if you want to um, consider all of this. And my own opinion, this is just too complicated. And ne no one wants to um, add this by hand in any kind of article, so you have to rely on some um, automation to um, get this this code right. Okay, there's um, also other stuff in um, HTML 5.1. For example, there are more input types now. Uh, we've got uh, months, week, and daytime local um, to the ones we already have. Um, there are new APIs, for example, for um, form validation or for spell checking. Okay, some features you may or may not use. Um, in HTML and CSS. Um, this is very simple. There's actually a download attribute, which I don't see very often, but it's quite useful. In this case, for example, uh, some clients tend to have uh, upload files like this, and then you have the typical final version point three now really the final version, and it's a really long um, 9.5, but if you give it a download attribute, um, what happens is, if someone wants to download the file, you will always get um, the um, text that is um, within the download um, attribute. For example, this here is, a, is actually a link to this file, but if I try to save it, um, 
I get the name that, um, that, I, that was given in the download attribute. Of course, it's only um, useful if you know uh, which file um, the client is uploading. But for example, if there's something like um, a menu card and you know that this um, upload is always just for the menu, then you can, um, uh, in, the, in your template, say something like download is menu.pdf, for example, and not anything the client wants it to be. Um, <clears throat> in forms, you can have required fields, and here we have some one field that is required, the other field is not required, and you actually have some um, service selectors for required or optional, and with it you can use it to style some things just with CSS without any classes. So in this case, if you want to, you can say that the required field shall have a red border, and the optional field can have a brown gray border. Of course, this can't be the only thing you do for required fields because this is not accessible because you only rely on color. So there still has to be some, some other things in the text. Um, <coughs> supported quite well. You can do something else with um, the pseudo class check fields. If you have checkboxes here in the label for the checkboxes, what you usually do is just let the user click on the checkbox and there he's got this checked. But um, with a little bit of CSS, you can um, add some usability here, here. And now we've got next to the checkbox some other indications that you really check this field. Um, this supported quite well. <coughs> Last year, um, for a client, I um, the client wanted some some icons for his download options. And then I programmed the um, template, and depending on which file um, was added there, I was giving the um, right icon. <coughs> and after I programmed this, which PHP, some sometimes later I um, thought that was a really stupid idea because the icon is just a gimmick; it's extra. You don't really need it within the content. And you can add this um, quite easily with just CSS, and that's the part here. You just read. Um, the attribute um, for the um, href, and then just check the last four letters. And if it's PDF, you uh, give it this icon, and if it's JPEG, you give it another icon. And there was no programming needed. It was in the template. I just could have done this with CSS. If I just would have thought. OK, um, maybe you know this, maybe you don't. There's actually hyphenation possible in um, <coughs> CSS for some time now. Um, what it does is, this is a normal German text, um, type of text, and you can see the um, gap here, which doesn't look very good. And if you turn on the hyphenation, then it looks like this, which in this case looks better. Usually, um, I don't use hyphenation. It depends on the width of your, of your text. If the text is um, as long as this, this um, looks good, but if you use hyphenation, for example, and on, man on a menu or on a sidebar, it usually doesn't look very good before because um, your words are, um, you sometimes have something like this that um, you only have two or three letters here, and you maybe don't want this. So you can use hyphenation. In some cases, it looks better, and in other cases, it doesn't. You have to try it out. And actually works quite well in different browsers. Okay, CSS counters, um, you can find a counter, this is here in the first line, and um, the counter is called section, and you need some, some place where you set the counter, and then in this, type, in this um, example, every time now, there's an H3, the section gets incremented by one, and then I just add some um, content and I say, okay, section plus the actual um, number of the section. So if I have three <coughs> headlines, this gives me section one, section two, section three. You can nest this and make it a little bit more complicated. So in this case, we have a list of items and the numbers are displayed via counter. And um, <coughs> this is quite useful if someone adds anything within um, the list, then the numbers are always correct. And every browser does it. Uh, by the way, the ribbon on the, um, in, 
on the upper right is also done with um, CSS counters. <coughs> How many people of you know about position sticky? Are you using it? No one uses it. It actually works quite well. For those of you who don't know this, the red part, um, I have three lifts here, uh, three gray lifts, and within the medium um, gray diff is another diff, and this diff is sticky. What it does is, if I scroll down here, the red part now is sticky, or sticks to the top, and if I scroll down, it stays there. And now the um, medium diff, the medium gray diff is at its end, and now the red part scrolls with it. And yes, you can use this for menus, for example. So, how many browsers do this? Many, but not everyone. Can you use it? In my opinion, yes, it just depends on how you want, what you want to achieve in, in uh, Azure Internet Explorer. Uh, if it's a, a menu, in some case, you can argue, okay, so may, maybe in Internet Explorer the menu just doesn't stick, and it just scrolls with the rest of it. Um, this is just easy to use, and you don't need any uh, JavaScript for it. So that's actually better. <coughs> okay, some other relatively new part are CSS shapes. You can define shapes, for example, as circles, or as ellipses, or as a polygon. You can even use uh, pictures for um, shapes, and then define a threshold, and then you need um, um, alpha transparency in the, in the image, and the mechanism will then, um, the shape will depend on your effort channel. And what it does is, this is Firefox, it does nothing. I have a round picture and I define the shape here, but Firefox doesn't interpret it yet. Uh, but <coughs> this is Chrome, Chrome interpret, interprets it. And what you can see is I have here defined a round shape, and this means that in, in this case, the text actually goes around the shape. Can you use this? Yes, you can use it because it looks a little bit better if you want this. It looks a little bit better in um, Chrome, and if this is Firefox, it just doesn't go around the shape, but the text is still there, so yes, you can use it. Um, yeah, different browsers will interpret it, but not every browser. <coughs> there are actually um, feature queries you can use. And in this case, um, in CSS, you use just support and then check if any feature is supported or not. Um, in this case, I'm checking for position sticky, and if position sticky is um, usable within this browser, then I give this slide, in this case this slide, another background color. And because Firefox um, knows about position sticky, um, the condition is met, and now I change the background color. You can use this for progressive enhancement. You just design a site for the worst case that the feature is not supported, then you check if the feature is supported and give it some other styles. <clears throat> and again, usually or a few years ago, we used Modernizer for something like this, and now you can do it in CSS. You can um, do multiple um, checks with um, OR and AND, and you can also use, for example, the NOT. This is supported in all modern browsers, not in Internet Explorer. <laughs> okay, who of you has, is already using Flexbox? You, that's somewhat expected. Okay, I will go um, quite fast um, and explain Flexbox. Um, Flexbox is supported quite well. Um, I can go back to that later. Uh, in the easiest um, version, you have a container, and within the container are a few items. And the easiest way to do anything is just give the container display flex. This makes your uh, container a flex box. <coughs> what it does is all the children of the container um, will be in one line if you don't define anything else. And the browser will try to um, press everything in one line. And we don't need any clothes, we don't need, need any clears, and these boxes automatically have the same height. 
Um, you can use something like justify content to um, spread your content out. You can, in this case, it's a space between. You can use space around, which gives um, more space around the edges. You can use something like align items to align your items um, vertically and say something like um, align item center, then they're in the center, or they are the bottom, the straight end. You can even stretch your items. In this case, I have given the container a certain height, and <clears throat> the discs don't need that height, but if you stretch them, they will take the most height they can get. <clears throat> um, you can use flex direction. For some reason, it gives you uh, the, um, the default value is row. So if your language is um, left to right, the items will be um, ordered like this. And in another language, if the language is um, right to left and they are in the other direction. You can actually say flex direction column, then you get your um, flex items from top to down. You can reverse the rows and then they start from the right. You even can reverse your columns and then if one starts at the bottom. <coughs> if you want anything fancy, you can order it any way you want with the um, attribute um, order and order it, for example, like this. <coughs> you have something like flex grow, which um, tells the item, which gives the, the items the ability to grow. In this case, this is the default, um, they're not uh, growing in any way. If I say the first item should grow with a value of 1, and the other with a value of 1, and the third with a value of 3, then the third will grow bigger. <coughs> And in this case, I would expect that the third child takes around three times the space of the other ones. I don't know why this isn't happening. It's maybe a um, conflict with the framework. If you only use it on the last item, then the first two items will take the space they need, and the other one will stretch on its own. As I said, um, Flexbox always tries to um, put all your items in the same line. So we have here um, nine, eight items. If I put in an, another item, it still works. In this case, if I put more items in it, um, it will still try to put them in one line, but now it overflows. Uh, what you can use is flex rack and tell them if the items don't um, fit within your container, then just wrap them into the next line and everything is visible. There are even more options for um, shrinking, for example, or for aligning um, content. Um, it gets complicated, but the easiest thing you can do with this is uh, center an item, uh, and you only have to define your container um, to be um, a flex box, and then justify your content and align your items, and this is, in my opinion, the easiest way to center an item. In this case, I've given a uh, height to the, to the container and the diff, um, the great diff contain, um, item in the middle doesn't have a specified width or height. So as I said, um, browsers are quite comfortable with the Flexbox module, but if you want to use it um, in real life, you have to add some prefixes. Um, at least for um, Microsoft, and in some cases you need a little bit different uh, words because uh, Flexbox was changing. And uh, these are some old words which uh, Microsoft used then. Um, you can do this easily if you use something like an um, auto prefix. Now, grids. Who's heard about CSS grids? Oh. Wow, more than I thought. Who's using CSS grids? Yeah. <laughs> um, grid layout can be used in um, all modern browsers. It works something like this. You have grid lines, you have grid tracks, which are um, columns or rows between two lines. You can have a grid cell, which is the, the smallest part possible, something like a table cell. <clears throat> and you have, can have a grid area. Easy example. You have a container as well. This is the same as before as in Flexbox. 
and in this case I have six items as children from A to F. And for the container I define the display to be grid and I define a grid gap, which is the gap between the cells, and I define a grid, in this case just the columns, and I um, put some lines in at 100 pixels and another 100 pixels and another 100 pixels. And this gives me um, a grid of three columns and I have six items, so what um, grid does is put three items in one row and then three items in the next row and it does it automatically. Now, there's a new unit you can use with um, grids and this is um, the fraction unit, um, 1FR and this means that it will use uh, one fraction if possible, in this case, everything should be the same width gives you something like this. This is actually um, not a graphic, this is um, already a grid in Firefox. Of course, if you uh, do something like this, one fraction, two fractions, one fraction, then uh, in the middle you have an, a box that is two times as big. <clears throat> you can also mix units and mix units and repeat uh, something within your grid. This works as follows. As the first uh, line at 50 pixel, and the last um, column should be 50 pixel too. Then I want to have um, five or uh, four other columns which have the same width. So in this case, um, grid, the grid will work as follows. Um, it knows the width, the maximum width for the, for the um, container. And from this container it takes 50 pixels in, uh, in the front, 50 pixels in the end. And then it um, subtracts all the gaps that are needed. And from the rest, it the rest will be divided by 4. And that that's, um, is the width of one fraction. And it gives you something like this. Um, next to columns, you can also define your rows this year. It works in the same way, just say uh, where you want to set your lines and auto, of course, lets the browser decide what to do. And this would be um, columns and rows defined by this statement. Um, <clears throat> now, within the grid you can place your items wherever you want. You say where items should start, at which line, and at which line it should end. You do this for each column and for each as a, for a column and a row. Um, you can do this in short form, which looks like this: starting line, end line for a column, starting line, end line for a row. And if you do this for all your ch the children, you can do something like this: the order which in the HTML is still A B C D E, um, but you can order it visually any any way you want. And if you have, for example, uh, a grid with um, 4 times 3, you can build your layouts like this if you want to. <clears throat> there are other things possible. For example, um, this is your usual um, <coughs> HTML for an important article with a header, article, a site, and a footer. And now if you do it with um, CSS grids, you can something like this, do something like this. We um, define a grid, we give it a grid gap, same as before, we define some columns and some rows, and then we can give the areas, as a, um, this is um, three columns, three rows, and now we can give the areas we have created names, or we are creating areas by giving names. And um, as I said before, we have a grid with three columns, three rows, and we can say, okay, in the first row, um, let's call this header, 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 and in the second row we have sidebar, content, content, and the footer is just uh, all over the grid, footer, footer, footer. And now um, for placement we can do something like this, we can just say header, grid area, put it in the header, and the article should be in the content, and uh, side should be in the sidebar, and footer should be in the footer. And this gives what you expect, this is actually grid within Firefox, and we have the grid here. It takes some um, getting used to working with grids, and this is just the basics. It gets way more complicated. 
Um, but you can see here, um, it's very easy to um, do some responsive design with it because you just define um, other grids as you um, get to smaller with um, viewports. Um, basic, um, in some cases, you can do the same design with flexbox or with grids. Um, the basic difference is that, is that flexbox is just for one dimension, one line, and grid is for two, two dimensional layouts, generally. Okay, some stuff from the future. Uh, I don't know who heard about this. This is a snap points module. The idea is as follows. You define snap points and then you have items and you can have your items uh, snap to whatever you like. In this case, the example is that uh, you can scroll this horizontally and whenever you scroll, the items, in this case image 3, should be snapping at the middle of the center of the page. And you do this uh, like this. <coughs> you define your snap points. In this case, uh, it's 100% of your viewport. And you repeat this so the snap points are uh, based on your viewport. And then you can say your scroll snap type can be mandatory or can be proximity. And I was surprised it actually works in Firefox. Works like this. If I scroll here, it will always snap to um, the closest point. This is mandatory, so it always snaps. And um, proximity means uh, if I do something like this, it doesn't snap. I can scroll wherever I want. But if I get somewhere in the proximity of the snap point, then it snaps. <laughs> so, which browser is supporting this? <laughs> Not many, but as I said before, it doesn't really matter. If you, for example, have a, um, a one-pager, and your one-pager um, uses the highest of the viewport, you can still use um, those, those snap points. They will work in Firefox, for example. They won't work in other browsers, but maybe in other browsers it's okay to just scroll. <coughs> this is something I've been waiting for, but um, is isn't developed as fast isn't developing as fast as I hoped. It's uh, called hanging punctuation. It's something for everybody who likes typography on the web. And you can define hanging, hanging um, punctuation with, uh, with a few sets like first, last. Um, I will show what I mean. Uh, the first example, um, I'm talking about the um, quotation marks here. The first example is the usual thing you see if you set, um, set a quotation mark. But what you maybe want, this is what you um, the bottom is what you want if you have some knowledge about typography. It's a hanging punctuation so that the uh, quotation marks are actually pulled um, to the left. You can do this a little bit, of course, with um, <coughs> with margins uh, for your first line. But then um, you it, that depends on your um, on your font. If you use hanging punctuation this would work, it would always work, it would always be right. So this is something that I've been waiting for for, for typography reasons. Um, and by the way, hanging punctuation is uh, used by this framework. Um, the, the numbers are on the left side, and you want this because uh, in classic typography, you want to have a straight line for your text here. And you don't want to have the numbers more to the right. And the other thing I've been waiting for, and we'll wait for a little bit longer, <laughs> is there's actually a line width module, which I had hoped would be developed faster as well, but it isn't. And if this works someday, you can define a real um, width for your, for your text, like you do in uh, print. And then you can have your text actually snap to the language. But you can't use this yet. Oh, I've finished. <laughs> I still have time left. 
<laughs> wow, this, uh, people were telling me I couldn't do 115 slides. <laughs> <laughs> Was it 115? Yeah. Huh? How many slides have we seen? Right 115. Now? It was? Yeah. Yeah, that's 115. I will put the slides online somewhere within the next week. Any uh, questions? Yeah. Uh, one question for the uh, snapping slider. Does the, the uh, snapping affect the, the arrows? If you click on the arrows, does it uh, scroll? Excellent the question. I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> 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 Yes and no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but this <laughs> In this case, I have. <coughs> to have yeah, I have to hold it down. And here it works, but just one time. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Uh. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Was there anything in there that you didn't know before? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Fine, and that's it, and you may go now. <laughs> <laughs>